20 weeks. Ah, halfway done. Can't believe that it's going by so fast. I know I say it every week, but 20 weeks, we're halfway done. So for 20 weeks, big things. We had our ultrasound and we had our midwife appointment. So I'll get through that stuff today. It might be a slightly longer video than normal. So my current weight is 127 and a half pounds. So I think, again, I haven't gone back to the beginning, but I think that's up six pounds. So in 20 weeks, I've gained six pounds, which seems pretty good to me. Uh, the baby is the size of a small artichoke this week. So baby's definitely growing, definitely feeling it a little bit more. So nursing date, still nursing, no changes there. Nipples still hurt, no changes there. Uh, I really actually meant to ask the midwives about that and I completely forgot on my appointment. So I'm going to a La Leche League meeting on Tuesday if I can get up and get everything ready on time. And we'll go to that and I'll ask there and see if they've got any information for me. Because it would be really nice. If it's something as, e as easy as thrush, then I'll start treating that and maybe it'll get better and then we'll be fine. But if not, then I don't know. My nipples are painful and they have a lot of peeling skin on them. So I don't know. So my restless legs seem to be gone as long as I take my prenatal for the most part, and I don't get overtired, which is a little bit hard sometimes when you have a toddler, but as long as I try to keep up on my sleep and I try to keep up on my prenatal vitamins, I don't seem to have too much of a problem there. Um, the last week I had a really emotional, horrible day uh, with my daughter, just one day, to the point where I didn't want to be at home anymore. I found out that she is really sensitive to me being upset. Um, she, I don't think she's ever seen me cry before because I'm not much of a crier. And she saw it a few times that day and she definitely changes her behavior at that time and becomes much more quiet and cuddly and things like that. So it just seemed to be the one day I'm hoping it doesn't happen regularly. I thought I was doing really good. I think in my pregnancy with with Kaylee, I cried once in the first trimester, and that was it. Again, I'm not much of a crier. And I didn't cry in the first trimester this time, and I was like, yes, I made it through. I'm going to be okay. No, it still hit me. So uh, there were just a whole bunch of things. I think it was just kind of building up, and she was just super clingy that day, super whiny, and I just had a really hard time handling it. But since that day, things have been fine. So... I don't know what it was, if it was her, if it was me, if it was both of us. Uh, regardless, it sucked. But it's over now. Um, I am getting heartburn again. So for the last three or four nights, always in the evening, I get a little bit of heartburn. It's not bad, but it's enough for me to be going, okay, what can I look at eating or doing to get rid of it? Something that helped when I had it occasionally with my daughter was... Uh, sorry, my mind just shut off, was uh, apples. So if I eat an apple when I've got heartburn, it seems to help it go away. It helped last night too. I shared an apple with her before bed and it took it away, which was really nice because it radiates up through like, the pain radiates up through my jaw and my ear and I kind of start to get a headache with it. And I mean, I get the typical pain right in the middle of my chest as well. So I'm hoping that doesn't become a regular thing at all. Um, I had my hair redone. She cut my bangs a little bit shorter. I had all these really horrible baby bangs that were getting fairly long, but they weren't as long as my regular bangs, and they just kind of kept sticking straight out. I'm like, well, let's try cutting my bangs as short as they are and see if I can get them to all go in one direction. And it seems to actually have helped a little bit. They still, they like to stick out away from my other bangs, but they're all the same length now, so they're a lot easier to straighten and curl and get them going, right? I got my pink touched up, my hot pink, and this actually kind of drives me nuts. I don't know why, but I got this pink when I was 20, 
weeks pregnant with my daughter, so two and a half years ago. I got pink in my hair when we found out she was a girl. After we had the ultrasound, we found out she was a girl, and we announced to everybody. The next time I went in, I got some hot pink put in my hair. And I've just kept it up. Every, I don't know, four months or so, we bleach out my roots, and we apply more hot pink. And then any appointments in between, we just apply hot pink on top, and just to freshen it up, because when it's new, it still tends to fade a little bit to an orange color. So I got that two and a half years ago. I've always had it since then. I always get it touched up every time I have an appointment, which is usually every, these days, 10 weeks, but it used to be every six to six to eight weeks, I would get it touched up and re-dyed and everything. But everybody seems to think that now that we've had our ultrasound, or even before, ever, ever since I got pregnant, really, everybody's like, oh, does the pink signify anything? I'm like, yeah, it signifies that Kaylee was a girl. Like, we don't know the gender. We're only 11 weeks along. We have no idea what the sex of the baby is. And we aren't finding out this time. So, everybody, it just annoys me. Because even people like family that see me regularly are like, oh, does the pink signify anything? No, have you not noticed? It's been there for two and a half years. Like, two and a half years. It's been there. And it's been the same. It's the same amount because she sits there and she takes just the pink out. And she refoils it and she... She redoes it. On occasion, a little bit more shows depending on how many layers she puts on. Other times, there's a little less showing, but it's always there. And I'm still getting that. And even I got my hair touched up on the weekend, and then we had our ultrasound on Monday, and I posted a new picture of how this is what my hair is supposed to look like, but it's so versatile that I can make myself look 16 again and give myself full bangs. And everybody's like, oh, you've got pink in your hair. Does that mean that you're having another girl. I'm like, no, we're not having another girl. Um, I don't know what we're having. So I will get into that. We had our ultrasound on Monday. Everything looks good. Baby is head down, which can change. They have swimming room at this point in there, so it could change. I know with my daughter, every time I had an ultrasound or an appointment, she was always head down to the point where it was hard to get some of the images for the ultrasound because she was so far into my cervix that uh, it was difficult and she avoided the ultrasound probe. So the baby is head down. I've got a posterior placenta this time, so it's on the back wall of my uterus, which could be why I feel like this baby is a Mexican jumping bean compared to my daughter. I felt my daughter really early and could see her really early, but I don't know, she just didn't move that much, whereas this one seems to be all over the place pretty constantly. Uh, but it's also my placenta up high enough that they're not worried about uh, uh, placental priva, where it's covering part of my cervix or anything like that. So everything looked really good. I don't know what the heart rate was at the ultrasound. The tech didn't tell us. Uh, we didn't find out the sex at the ultrasound. We couldn't see. I couldn't see the the screen. So the way that they do ultrasounds here, it seems, is I go in. I get the ultrasound done, they do all of their measurements, they're looking at everything like that, and the screen is too far forward, so I can't even, like, peer back and look at it, it's too far forward. She does all of her measurements, she prints out a few pictures, like, the profile and straight on, which is a very scary picture, um, as well as, like, a little bit of the body, arms, hands, that kind of stuff, so she prints out those pictures as she goes along. After she's done all of her measurements and looking at everything, then my husband comes in, and in this case, my daughter was in there. My husband was a little bit late for the appointment from leaving work to come for the appointment. So she came in with me, and she was just sitting on a stool off to the side, eating some goldfish and drinking her juice and going through my wallet and emptying it. But she was really good. So they do that. Then my husband came in, We, and then she shows us again. So she shows us the head, the face, the heart, um, the hands, the feet. She didn't scan anywhere near the genitals, which is good because we don't want to know. Well, I don't want to know. Uh, so she doesn't scan anywhere near that. So really, once my husband comes in, it's like a maybe three or four minute thing. She goes, here's the head, here's the face, here's the spine, here's the feet, here's the hands. Done, basically. Clean myself up and we leave. So, it all looked good. Even my 
untrained eyes. I've got a little bit of background in ultrasound, not very much, being a vet tech. Uh, and everything that she showed us looked good. And again, she didn't scan over the, the genitals, so we don't know the sex of the baby. And then a few days later, I had my midwife appointment. Baby's heart rate was 155, which seems to be pretty regular. It seems to be 155 almost all the time, every time that we check. Um, the actual ultrasound results, everything's normal. The baby is just under the 50th percentile, which Kaylee was 50th when she was born. So they aren't worried about weight or anything like that. My blood pressure was really low. It was 80 over 50 that day, although I hadn't had breakfast yet. I had like a few grape tomatoes before we ran out the door for the appointment. So I looked very skinny because I wasn't bloated at all yet. When I was, when I laid down on my back or laid down on my back so that she could listen with the Doppler, it was like literally my stomach. I had a uterus, then there was a little bit of a hollow beside my uterus, and then the bump of my hips. Like it was very, very prominent exactly what was my uterus. And so she asked if I feel comfortable with my weight gain and stuff like that. And I said, I do. I'm still eating lots. I'm eating healthy. But it, I hadn't had anything to eat yet. So I wasn't bloated at all. I didn't have any food on my stomach. So my blood pressure was low. And I looked really skinny. Um, what else? They do have the gender. So when, they were when she was looking at the ultrasound results, they do have the gender. And she's put a note in there to not tell me. Uh, and... But everything else looked good. Heart was normal. Brain was normal. Kidneys were normal. Everything was good. Uh, the pubic pain is just as bad, if not slightly worse, than it has been in the past. She recommended a three-prong approach. So I did end up getting a brace, and I'll show that to you, kind of, when I do a belly shot. Um, it's just basically an elastic band that goes around my hips with Velcro on it where I can cinch it tighter and then Velcro it closed so that it really just adds stability. So instead of my pubic symphysis having this little bit of movement that it can do, it just kind of squeezes it so that it holds it in place so it can't shift. And the first few days that I wore it, I was like, I don't know if this is doing anything. It still kind of hurts on occasion, things like that. And then I went a day without it. And I was like, okay, yeah, it, re it really is doing something. So I do try to wear it all day, every day. I don't wear it at night. I do use a pillow between my knees if I'm at all sore. If I'm not at all sore, then I actually don't use a pillow because I don't sleep as well with a pillow. Uh, so we're going to try a three-pronged approach. We're going to use the brace. So I'm going to use that every day. I haven't picked any up yet, but the lethicin, we're going to try that. So that supplement, we're going to give that a shot. And then we're, I'm also going to ice it three times a day. So we're going to do those three things and see if that, that works. Hopefully it helps because it's not fun and being at 20 weeks and having this kind of pain already is not going to make for a very fun later pregnancy. I'm hoping it doesn't continue to get worse and then it just kind of sits where it is. Uh, if I've been wearing the brace I can actually lift my feet to put them in my pants. If I haven't been wearing my brace I have to sit down and put my pants on because I can't lift my foot high enough to get it into the pants. It causes too much instability in my pelvis. So let's, we're going to give that a shot. I hope it works. But other than that, I think that's all I've got. I will do a belly shot and then I will talk to you guys next week. I don't have anything TMI this week. I don't think. We'll see. Um, so I'll do a belly shot and then I will say ta-ta. Straight on. One side. The other side. Put this down. So this is the brace. It's really just Velcro and an elastic. And it just squeezes everything. There's straight on it. It gives me quite the love handles. Sideways. And the other side.
So I think that's all I've got. I will talk to you guys next week for 21 weeks. Again, it's going by super fast. If you're following along and you're 20 weeks as well, then it's going to come faster than you think. It's going to seem like it takes forever. The days are long, but the weeks are short. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!